Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, do not adjust the frequency of your codec. You have dialed in to psychopath exposure, and we would be honored if you would join us. What's up, warriors? Welcome back to Psychopath Exposure. My name is Kira wanted to talk to you guys today about a lot of things but mostly mostly morse code but mostly in particular how the narcissist is able to weasel their way through a conversation that gets in your head that triggers the cognitive dissonance how they're able to manipulate you how they're able to take control of a conversation usually the closure conversation that you try to have at the end after you've been discarded after they've been ghosting you after you caught them cheating on you and and you feel that if you just have one last conversation you can make sense out of all this you can make sense out of why they had an affair behind your back you can make sense out of why they cheated on you right in front of you and yet it never it never seems to work out I remember oh man I remember when I didn't know what the hell I was dealing with. And uh, this was after the cheating had taken place. This was after I had broken up with the psychopath. And uh, we were supposed to meet up to exchange our things weeks later. And what ended up, what I thought was going to happen, I thought I was just going to command the floor and say what I needed to say. And she was going to cry and beg for my forgiveness and beg to take me back. And this is what I thought was going to happen. Like a lot of people that they break up and then you fight and then you, you kiss and make up and you get back together. I thought it was going to be one of those things. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. It was just a bunch of word salading, a bunch of twisting of the facts. I think the conversation, I think that whole thing took like seven hours. I'm not even, I'm, I'm not even kidding. How long, how long we were there discussing shit how she was able to just twist things and somehow convince me that what she did was not even consciously done oh i must have had too much to drink i didn't even know and this and the other and for me to after all these hours and my brain is like blasted how i sat there knowing what i had seen knowing what i had discovered knowing 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 and yet somehow my brain would tell me, but she's convinced that this didn't happen. She's convinced that these events did not unfold the way you tell them. And she's not exactly screaming at you or threatening you. Maybe you're wrong. That was the cognitive dissonance, right? It's like, well, she wouldn't be sitting here with a straight face saying all these things the way she's saying them if, if they weren't true. Maybe man, maybe I'm losing touch with reality here. Like, it's, it's just genius. It's, it's genius how these, these slime balls have the ability to twist your mind over and over and over again and convince you to stay, convince you to stick around, convince you not to um, throw them out in the street, right, to condemn them. No, they, they managed to somehow twist the logic, twist your cognition, just twist it all and make you feel like you are losing if you get rid of them. You are losing something of value if you walk away. You are losing something that you'll never find again if you put your foot down and you stick to your boundaries and you walk away, how in the hell? Because see, that had never happened to me before. Any conversation, any conflict I've ever had, you resolve it. Good conversation, you bring up the facts, the other person has their facts, you bring them to the table, you get clarity. But that only works when you're dealing with a rational individual, not a manipulative son of a bitch. Not a con artist, not a scam artist, not a narcissist. Only with someone that wants actual resolution. Someone that's actually honest and rational 
and wants to move forward. But these predators, these scumbags, these narcissists, these toxic, toxic, evil, deranged souls, lost souls, that's not what they're after. And that's why these things play out to the you know, textbook, to the T. This is why. So I wanted to read a comment that came in from, from Mary Jane Manson. That's a really cool name, Mary Jane. So she says, a psychologist friend of mine told me one of the best pieces of advice, make sure your boundaries are clear and concrete for everything in life. It was not the first time I heard the boundaries advice, but it was the first time I recognized how implementing it would make life so much easier. Draw that line, make sure the line is clearly communicated, and never get sucked into an argument you will never win again. Line crossers can attempt to use their typical dishonest debate tactics, such as gaslighting, smoke and mirrors, improperly applied analogies and reasoning techniques. You make me feel like I did something wrong, but you blah 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 blah. You only need to provide a single response and only once. You cross the line. End of story. A lot of people will struggle to stick to the script due to low self-esteem or lack of confidence or whatever. You have to be confident that you made the line clear and there is no second guessing it. You can't make the other party recognize the administrative finality of your closing statement if you do not adhere to it. Well said Mary Jane Manson, thank you for that, thank you for that. You see how she points out line crossers line crossers, not rational, respectful individuals. We're talking about line crossers. They get narcissistic supply by crossing the line, by pushing your boundaries, seeing how far they can push you, seeing how much they can get away with, even after they've committed atrocious boundary crossing. They want to see how much further they can go. And the more they get away with it, the less they respect you, the more confidence they have, and the easier it is to manipulate their prey. Once the cognitive dissonance has been triggered and you're not sure what's right or wrong anymore, you're not sure what actually happened versus what the line-crossing narcissist is feeding you, all bets are off. It's at that point that they make you feel like they have the answers and they are the ones that you should listen to. Because after all, they're the ones that are in control of you. They've been abusing you, they've been manipulating you, therefore they hold the power, right? See, even as I say that, it just sounds horrible. And yet that's the way the brain rationalizes things when under the cognitive uh, dissonance spell. Let's just call it a spell for the sake of romanticizing it. Um, you know, you get into these conversations you, conversations, you try to have these closing, closure, I don't even want to call them arguments, just you, you want to arrive at, at a place where you're both on the same page, you're amicably moving forward, you're both accepting that the relationship came to an end and you want to amicably terminate it, go your separate ways, not be in each other's lives anymore, not cause problems for each other anymore, not get jealous if the other one gets married the next week or whatever, just let it go. Rational. Adults do that. Rational adults that want to enjoy the rest of their time here on planet Earth 
That's what they're looking for. But that's not what the narcissist is looking for because the narcissist is cursed. <laughs> they're doomed for eternity in hell. That's basically that's their, their sentence, right? That's why they keep doing this shit. They know it's never going to get better for them. They're under some sort of grandiose delusion. And here you are presenting them with an opportunity to just clear the air, admit that you lied, admit that you cheated, admit that you can't hold a relationship, admit that you struggle with honesty, admit that you feel no empathy whatsoever for your partner or for those that you've hurt. And hell, you don't even have to go that far. Because once you know you're dealing with someone like this, once you've educated yourself enough and you understand that having any type of communication or contact with a psychopathic, sociopathic, narcissistic predator like this, you're going to end up drained of your energy and nothing's going to change. These individuals are not suddenly going to become rational. They're not suddenly going to feel empathy. They're not suddenly going to flip a switch in their disordered personality and say, well, all right, let's lay all the cards on the table. Let's, let's just come clean and actually apologize and actually feel it and actually commit to making a change and, and, and being a better human being moving forward. That's not how this works ever and you guys know because you've tried this over and over and over again the narcissist has a way to just push your boundaries the minute you call them out on something and they realize that you know and they got nowhere else to go they're gonna start using those typical dishonest debate tactics to try and take control of the conversation but you guys you guys have to develop that confidence and that courage to say no 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 nice try motherfucker we're not talking about that this is what we're talking about back on topic okay got a hair on my lip jeez so you have to bring it back on topic and you can't dance around shit you can't let them take control you can't let them gaslight you and start distorting because they will try to distort the truth. They will, they will try to flip the script on you. They will change one little piece of the truth, one little fragment and, and stick it over here, which totally changes the meaning of things. They will totally switch it, flip it, whatever they got to do. And they'll do it so nonchalantly. They'll do it right at the beginning of the conversation. Oh, remember when you did X, Y, Z? And then this X, Y, Z happened and you were talking to that other person and blah. And it's like, hold on a second, motherfucker. You're the one that, that had an affair. You're the one that was cheating with. You're the one. You, no, no. You are the only one that has done this shit. Don't try to put that on me. Nice try. Back on topic. You crossed the line. You crossed the line. End of fucking story. There's no negotiating here. There's no negotiations. There's no room for negotiations here. If cheating is a non-negotiable, there's no negotiation. You understand? If cheating is a non-negotiable for you, then there's no room for any type of negotiating with the narcissist, with the cheater, with the user. There isn't. See how it's a waste of time? They're going to they're gonna throw those smoke and mirrors at you. They're going to tell you, well, the reason I did it is because you. Well, the reason this and that is because you. I kept, I kept telling you and, and you wouldn't do this and this. No. You crossed the line. That's not the solution. The solution is not cheating. The solution is not dishonesty. The solution is not betrayal. That's not the solution. Oh, well, you're always, you're always exaggerating. Oh, and you're so sensitive. And, and you always try to do this. No, no, no. No, no, no. Nice try. Back on topic. They don't like having those conversations. Those are the uncomfortable conversations that the narcissist tries to avoid. 
and when they find themselves in it, believe me, they are going to find something to shift focus to. Sometimes they go back into their childhood and they start telling you about how they were abused and their father abused them and their mother abused them and, and embarrassed them and they put them through all this type of stuff and they'll, they'll, the crocodile tears come out and suddenly you start feeling sorry for them. Oh, you know, they can never catch a break. You know, wow, it makes sense. When they were young, this happened to them and this happened to them. Okay, that makes sense. And somehow you, you forget that they just put you through hell undeservingly and that just because they went through some shit, that doesn't give them the right to do it to you. You see that? Just because something happened to you, something criminal, something traumatic, something beyond cruel, doesn't give you the right to start doing it. If, if, if someone breaks into your house, that doesn't give you the right to go rob a liquor store or, or a candy store or whatever. That doesn't get, just because you were robbed doesn't mean that, oh, now all of a sudden I get to go and rob everybody on the planet. That's not how it works, narcissists. That's not how it works. But they're so fucked up that they think that they're above the law. They think they're above human society's um, accepted levels of trust, of boundaries, of honesty. They think that they're above that. Like they want that. They want you to trust them. They want you to be honest with them, but they can screw you over anytime they want. They can stab you in the back anytime they want, but God forbid you turn the knife on them. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing with that? You see, you're a traitor. You were trying to stab me in the back with that. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, wait, wait, hold on a second. You've been doing this for five, 10 years. And now I just wielded my weapon and you're spazzing out. If you're not careful, they'll make the entire closure conversation about that. And suddenly you're arguing and you're defending something that you really haven't even done. And that becomes the focal point and that's how they take control. That's why at the end of these conversations with psychopaths and narcissists, you're left drained. This is why many people stay in the, in the relationship with these scumbag predators because they're so drained every single time they try to have a conversation and say, hey, I know you're cheating. I caught you. I've read the text messages. I heard you in the bathroom on the cell phone. You disappeared for another two days again. We already, we've talked about this 17,000 times and you keep doing it and you try to like break up and you try, you try and you try. To them, you're just nagging. It's annoying. They don't even want to hear it. They're going to keep doing it. But the reason they keep doing it is because you keep enabling and entertaining it because you won't walk out. And they know that. So th that's their leverage. They know you're not going to go anywhere. They know that you're going to try to talk. They know that you're going to try to reason. So they're just going to feed you some more bullshit. Some more bullshit. Guys, like, like Mary Jane Manson said, you cross the line. End of story. There's nothing else to talk about. This is what happened. These are the facts. And this is what's coming for you now. And yeah, a lot of them, if you're strong like that, if you're firm like that, and they're, they've been using you, using you for supply, and they suddenly realize, oh shit, they're going to kick me out of the house. Oh shit, they're going to stop paying for my bills. I'm going to have to actually get a job. Oh shit, I'm not going to have a bed to sleep on tonight. Oh shit, I'm going to be alone for the holidays. Well, not really, because they always have another source of supply, but sometimes that doesn't work, so that's why they tend to hoover during the holidays. But yeah, when you're strong and firm and you set your boundaries, that's when they panic and they cower. That's when the mask 
completely falls out. That's when you see who they really are at that moment. When they realize, shit, I can't manipulate this person anymore. This person's not buying my shit. And that's when they're out. A lot of times they'll throw a tantrum to scare you and they'll start threatening you and breaking shit or whatever. That's their immature, childish nature coming out. Blended in with some psychopathic, evil, demonic possession that's also pissed off that you caught them and that you took their power and control away from them. Remember I told you the narcissist thrives on power and control. You take control and you take their power away and they're nothing. But as long as you keep entertaining these conversations and you, and you treat them like if they're, they're rational human beings, you treat them like if they actually want some sort of conflict resolution, and they're going to keep pulling these tactics on you. And they're going to they're gonna try to, to reason things out. And they're going to do it from an angle where they're in control. And, and they're going to make you feel that they're in control. And if you surrender control to your abuser, time and time again, you have the proof and the evidence that you've been abused. Time and time again, they've told you what you needed to hear only to do it again the very next day, sometimes the very next hour, then nothing's going to change. If you want change, you got to start doing something different. Because if you do the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result, especially with narcissists like this, that's the definition of insanity. And I know a lot of you feel like you're going insane, right? Well, yeah. Because you're trying to do the same thing. You're trying to reason with a psychopath. You're trying to reason with a narcissist. And you can't. Talking to these people is like talking to a crazy person. Nothing's going to change. I mean, sometimes I relate this to talking to, to a drug addict or an alcoholic. And it's like, yeah, they... They're going to stop. They're going to stop. Oh, I promise. I said I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But when, when that, that little voice that's, that's dormant that tells them, hey, you know what? It's just me and you. It's just me and you. You and me. Right? Me and you against the world. Let's go to the liquor store and let's, let's grab a bottle of vodka. Yeah. That, that, that's a good idea. Let's go do that. That little voice, right? When, when that voice kicks in, whatever negotiation you made, whatever terms of closure you and your narcissistic, abusive, lying, cheating ex made, that's all going to be thrown out the window. And they're going to come back and they're going to try and mess with you again. They're going to try to push their boundaries again. And if you're, if you're weak, if your boundaries are weak, if your resolve is weak, then they're going to keep getting their way. You have to be firm. And it's not just being firm in, in how you speak with them. It's firm within yourself. Are you taking the steps that you need to take on the inside to be completely done with these people? Are you doing what you need to do to ensure that when they do stupid shit like that, that you got them by the balls. Are you doing that? Or are you hoping that this abusive, lying, malignant, manipulative, disordered individual suddenly is going to be telling the truth? And you're going to let them back into your life and back into your home and back into your bed. Whereas you guys know, once you bond, with these predators, yeah, sexually bond with them. It's like they have their tentacles around you now. And that trauma bond gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Can you live without the narcissist and deal with the feelings of withdrawal 
and deal with the loneliness sometimes, deal with the knowing that you're never going to make love with this beast again. That no matter what, no matter how you feel, no matter what happens, you're never going to swap spit with this piece of shit again. Can you make a commitment? Can you make a commitment? Not to me, to yourself. To yourself. And I don't mean announcing it to the world. I mean, can you just make a commitment between you and God, actually, that you're going to take the steps necessary to rid yourself of this traumatic bond, of this narcissistic entanglement. And no matter how you feel, as far as wanting to contact them again and speaking with them again and trying to work things out for the millionth time, you're going to resolve to do something else. But you're not going to reach out. You're not going to entertain them. You're not going to have one more talk. You're not going to hear them out. You're not going to negotiate. You're not going to have it. Can you do that? Can you do something different so that you can have a different outcome? That's what it took for me. And in my experience, not just with psychopaths, not just with close to be disordered, toxic, broken people, but in almost, if not every area of my life, you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, and you're just going to keep, you're going to keep getting the same shit you've always gotten. And that's why I believe life keeps throwing you the same challenges over and over and over again until you do something different. And sometimes... Yeah, you do something different and things get worse. But a lot of times things need to get worse before they get better. And it's better sometimes for that to happen than to be in the same familiar low level of abuse. It's like you're being abused like the refrigerator hum. It's there and you're so used to it you don't notice it. But it's there. So this abuse is happening, and it's happened so much and so often and so frequently, and so it's become part of your, your normal, your normal day-to-day -day life that changing it, getting rid of it, it's almost scary. It's like, oh my God, what would I do without it? What would I do without this person hoovering? What would I do without these constant arguments that never get anywhere, that never get resolved? That unfamiliarity is scary, but there's, a, there's actually a light at the end of the tunnel when you take that path. You're going to have to see for yourself. I can help you in my coaching program if you're interested. Um, I have a private one-on-one -on -one program that we, we conduct over Zoom, and we, we go into detail on this situation. Go into detail. And um, I like to do is help you guys create an exit strategy for those that are stuck and for those that have broken free and are still dealing with the PTSD, with the anxiety, with, with the trauma bond, like with, with the rumination. I like to help you guys rewire those conditions and get you, get you into a position where you can start looking forward to the rest of your life with optimism, with excitement. Because once, once you lose your will to live, once you lose your will to even wake up, it's like, what's the point? The only thing that gets you excited is the idea that maybe your narcissist ex might come back. Just to give you a little breadcrumb. Just to get into another fight, because that's what you've identified with. As long as you're fighting with your abuser, that means somebody cares, somebody recognizes your recognizes that you're alive. Somebody recognizes your existence because they care about you enough to abuse you. They care enough to fight with you. 
they care enough about you to manipulate you. And that's just some stinking thinking, folks. That's some stinking thinking. So if you'd like to work together with me, uh, visit my website. I have a link below in the description. And um, just reach out. I'll give you some details on the program. And we can workshop this thing together. <sighs> in the meantime, guys, stay strong, stay vigilant. You know, watch these videos. If they're helpful, share the video with someone that you feel might benefit from this information. If you got value out of it, you know, drop a like on the video to help the algorithm show it to more people. If you hated it, you can drop a thumbs down. It's gonna do the same thing. <laughs> Just looks nicer. Um, and uh, you know, Christmas is around the corner. And remember, the narcissist gets triggered during the holidays when things aren't working out with their new supply. When they start, mm, they start thinking about you. It's not that they love you. It's not that they miss you. It's the idea of a perfect life that they can never, they can never even taste. That idea fills them with such delusion that no matter what they've done to you, they feel that there's always a chance to come back. And uh, Christmas and the holidays tends to be a triggering moment, not just for the victim, but yeah, for the narcissist. When things aren't working out, when their new supply catches wind of what's going on, when they self-sabotage that situation, they're gonna try and come back to you. And if you don't got some firm boundaries, if you don't got that you cross the line script memorized, they're gonna weasel their way back in, break through your walls. So don't let them do it. Don't do it. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you guys are having a fantastic December. Uh, it's been really nice this time of year. And um, if you have any other ideas for videos, something that you're struggling with right now, in particularly to the, uh, to the holiday season, um, leave a comment below and um, I'll see if I have a chance to make a video answering your questions. All right? So once again, thanks for the support. I will see you guys really, really soon. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. Wishing you all the best. See you in the next video.